In this lecture, we're going to talk about a special continuous distribution called the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution. It probably looks very familiar to you since it is what most people refer to as the bell curve and you've probably seen this in school where bell curves are used to shift marks up or down based on how well students perform. So this formula you see here is the PDF of the Gaussian distribution. Notice how they also use the little f notation on Wikipedia. The interesting thing about the Gaussian distribution, so we talked about last time that the mean and the variance are two special numbers that help us describe what a continuous distribution looks like. With the Gaussian distribution, the mean and the variance completely describe the shape of the distribution. So the mean tells us where the center peak is of the bell curve, and the variance tells us how much that bell curve is spread out. So you can see this yellow curve is very spread out, and the blue curve is spread out not that much. So let's talk a little bit about this formula. First, there is a normalizing constant. It's 1 over the square root of 2 pi times sigma, which is the variance. Actually, sigma stands for the standard deviation. Usually, it's written as 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared, where sigma squared goes inside the square root. So sigma squared is the variance, and sigma is the standard deviation. Second part of the PDF is this exponential. So we take the negative of x minus the mean, which we denote by mu, square that, divided by 2 sigma squared, or 2 times the variance, and then we exponentiate that. Note that since we square the thing where x is, this PDF is symmetric. So if you go a distance from the mean to the left, or that same distance to the right, you will get the same value for the PDF. So let's do an exercise where we plot the values of a Gaussian curve from, say, minus 100 to 100. we'll create a new function, call it my Gaussian. We'll take in uh, two parameters, mu and sigma squared. And we'll output an array So n will be the number of different values between min x and max x. So we're going to start our little x value at min x, and then we want to know how much to increment x on each iteration of the loop. So we'll call that dx, and we'll say it's max x minus min x divided by n. So at the end of the loop, we're going to add dx to x.
we're going to call this F. Okay, so we're going to return a uh, Let's return the array of x values also. So x vi is going to equal to x. And f of i is going to equal to. So return x and f. So 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared times exponential of negative x minus the mean squared divided by 2 times sigma squared. So let's do this for um, mu equals zero, sigma squared equals one. Let's say minus, let's say minus ten to ten, and then have a thousand values between them. Okay, so now we can plot x and f. All right, so we get this bell curve. So the peak is at zero because that's the mean. And then it's spread out and from about negative two to two. So the drop off or how fast f of x goes to zero is pretty quick. You can see the maximum value is about 0 0.4. Let's try that again with a smaller variance. And some smaller values also of min x and max x. So let's do 0.1 for the sigma squared. Let's plot it again. All right, so the drop off is even quicker now. We're, we get to about zero at minus one and one. And notice the peak value is above 1.2. So since this is a PDF, values above one are allowed.